Anyone with the name follower has some problems. I don't know what kinds exactly, but it doesn't seem like a healthy title, or in this case, category, or subcategory. I don't know who's who in all this menagerie, but the website has multiple categories. Mass Effect, Halo, PlayStation, Star Wars, and Valve, with corresponding YouTube, Google+, and Twitter accounts. This has got to be the biggest shilling I've ever seen. This person or people, whomever, couldn't just pick one franchise, they got five. I mean, what's next? EA or Nintendo follower? I mean, why stop there? Why not go CD Projekt Red follower? That's a, that's a popular game these days, just a big demographic. You probably sell your soul to anything you come across. Just go for it. But please, talk about this Mass Effect and drama criticism. I'm sure your, your opinions will be completely objective, clear-headed, and unbiased. The time that I've spent playing the game has been nothing but filled with wonder when I go to new planets, excitement when I get to a new story mission, and just fun and enjoyment while playing the game. <laughs> Who would have thought a Mass Effect follower receives nothing but pure joy and bliss from his product without explaining how or why? Why, the next time I receive sexual orgasm, I'll be sure to remind myself just how tall and fictional the alien Vetra is. Now the reviews are people's opinions, and nothing but that. An opinion is a viewer judgment formed about something without fact or knowledge. Screen and video captures are not opinions. What I'm trying to say is Mr. Tucker is wrong. He's wrong by definition. Additionally, he's wrong by having his own opinion, which isn't founded in any kind of fact, aside from his subjective emotional reaction, which he also has not defined. It's kind of like arguing without any tools. It's a, he's a raging fanboy, but clearly those other raging fanboys with dozens of screen and video captures are all haters, which is somehow a bad thing to hate things which demonstrably deserve it. If you're going to learn anything here, learn this. Flaws are bad. That is not meaning that they are wrong, as it's their opinion. Yes, it can mean they're wrong. The validity of an opinion is determined by facts and evidence. No, Your Honor, I did not kill this person. I was just exiting the building while holding a bloody knife on complete happenstance. If we all think that every religion or belief that enters our brains about any topic are correct, well, I've got a bridge to sell you. Some people just aren't going to like the game. That shouldn't deter you from trying out the game and seeing if you enjoy it yourself. Well, people who don't like those kinds of games won't play Andromeda. So apparently anyone who dislikes the game doesn't like the genres? Uh, instead of thinking that way, consider that there might be actual professional game reviewers or amateur game reviewers or YouTubers or journalists or just people who like all sorts of genres or like all kinds of games. Some are hardcore RPG players, some are hardcore shooter gamers, but they all like those kinds of games or else they wouldn't play them. Mass Effect series is rather popular, so it attracts all kinds of people. But suddenly their analysis is all wrong because you said so. Right. Some people are not a fan of RPG or open world games, and from there, they're not going to like Mass Effect Andromeda, and therefore they're going to write negative things about the game. Plus, as many of you know from being on the internet, some people just like to cause negative feedback. They just want to promote negative things. They just want to say bad things about a game just to fuel hate. Excuse me, but what's wrong with hating something? You have no problem gushing over something. You make it sound like there's something inherently wrong with disliking something strongly. You see, we have proof. We have screen and video captures. Things are objectively bad. They are flawed. Flawed things are bad. This is really not hard to grasp. I see greater faults in biasedly liking something, especially when such opinions are unfounded. So don't let those get to you too much. Try to ignore them if you can, because from all of my experience in the two days of playing Mass Effect Andromeda, I've been enjoying the absolute hell out of this game. And other people more objective than you haven't. Why should I listen to your opinion when you're a shill. I mean follower. You see, you just made a value judgment without backing up or explaining your claim. That's what's called an opinion. Give us a reason why you judge something some certain way. 
in your case positively, I guess. Why is that belief more important than the flaws? You also have to prove to us you're not some corporate shill, considering you or whomever is part of followers following at least five organizations for God knows what reason. Kind of helps with the believability and credibility when you aren't blatantly trying to get people to purchase a product. Instead, talk about the art. Also helps that you're not reading a script. And is it just me or is this guy trying really hard to sound like Barack Obama? Now, on to the animation bugs. Now, I'm not gonna lie, those are happening in the game. I've encountered a few of them. But think about how many people are playing the game right now. It doesn't matter how many people are playing the game. The bugs still exist. And think about how many bugs that you've seen. I don't know specific numbers, but I've seen a total of about 15 animation bugs. Those are animation bugs. I can count a series of flaws from animation, dialogue, gameplay, and of course storytelling just by looking at videos on YouTube, on Reddit, uh, GIFs, and game journalist posts. It's not looking that great. The game is huge and the bugs are all over the place. So 15 out of thousands of people playing the game. Okay, what are you getting at? I, what's your conclusion here? What? What syllogism did you just invent? Because there are 15 bugs and lots of people are playing the... what? So because I have a hole in my head and lots of other people do, therefore we're smart. Okay, this is referred to as... Most illogical reaction. Now like I said, I've come across very few animation bugs. You said 15. 15 is not a few. It's more than a dozen. Do you know what your own words mean? None of them are really noticeable or game-breaking. They're just an animation bug. Well, yes, just the ones you noticed, but that doesn't take into account the dozens of other animations or non-animation bugs throughout other people's experiences, and it's ridiculous to the point of being kind of sad. Now, those are things that are going to happen. No matter how much time you put into a game, no matter how long you spent testing it, those will always always happen. Think of a game over the past five years that has not had some form of animation bug. This is more than just one or two, and more than just animation. You are not even addressing the criticism here. You're putting a blanket statement by saying your own observable animation bugs you encountered aren't that big a deal. There's so much that goes into modeling a single character that it is extremely easy for one small thing to go wrong. You were previously talking about animation bugs now modeling. Okay, those are related. Are you talking about the dimensions of a particular model, the, the UV unwrapping, the, the rigging? I mean, what exactly are you talking about here? It could be with the base model of the character, it could be the rigging of the animation, or it could be just blocking it out. Uh, bl blocking what out? Y your memory of seeing a bad model? <laughs> Don't worry, potential buyer. <laughs> See this horrible model? Just block it out of your memory. See? The game's fine. Now what I think he's trying to say is there's an actual phase in modeling where you start with a primitive, like a 3D object, like a block or a sphere or a cylinder, and then you start, like a sculpture, you're cutting away parts into like a face or what have you. That's not an animation bug, that's a modeling technique. Or it could be any other steps when it comes to creating a character. Now this obviously does not excuse it. These are still issues, but the developers know about it and they are working on it. <laughs> so everything you just said has now been subverted. Gra bravo there, that's great. And you have no idea what they're actually working on. And again, I want you to take a step back and really think about how much work gets put into the animations and think about how many ways it can go wrong. And also, think about it. Is an animation bug really gonna stop you from enjoying this fantastic game? Here's your argument. Mass Effect Andromeda is fantastic that even if there are bugs, you should still get it. Mass Effect Andromeda looks like a series of innumerable small cuts that lead to death by blood loss. The difference between the critics here is they're accepting the good and the bad. You can't seem to see the flaws for what they're worth. I can admit the gameplay looks reasonably good, and the levels look really good. That doesn't mean everything else is, though. Now on to actual bugs. As opposed to the animation bugs you just dismissed? You mean there are more bugs in different categories you're not telling us about? Again, there are bugs in the game, as with every game. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. 
When I was at the capture event, there were some pretty major bugs. And with the game that I've been playing now, those bugs are gone. An example of a bug that I had at the capture event was every time that I died, my skills would reset. Again, these are just your subjective experiences. How about the various game-breaking bugs, like being unable to continue because the dialogue wheel doesn't pop up after someone's voice doesn't play, or the scanner doesn't work to progress to the next section, or whatever the heck is going on in this scene. It's ridiculous. The amount of bugs and issues that we have come across in just this small game of ours is a lot, and the scope of Mass Effect Andromeda is a hundred times of our game, meaning that they're going to come across a hundred times more issues. Okay, so you're saying that because it's so big, they're going to have even more bugs. I, I agree. So you're saying it's going to be a large, bug-ridden game. I also agree. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Now I know that there are a few people out there that are better qualified to say this than I am, but with my few years of experience on learning how to make games and working on a few games, the amount that is great in Andromeda comparatively to the amount that is wrong in the game vastly outweighs each other. Such as... Now the last thing that I want to cover are the comments on characters and story writing. This is the first time you are meeting these characters, people you have never spoken to in a previous game, in a setting you have never been in, with a story that you have not played before. If it looks like I'm talking to a wooden doll with barely any expressions, I don't really care how new or unknown they are. They're going to sound and look like crap. Ashley Williams looks better from 10 years ago. Random Witcher 3 NPCs look better. Hell, random Mass Effect NPCs look better. Just because something is new, doesn't mean it's good. And trust me, if you think you know how the story in Andromeda is going to go, you are already wrong. Actual reviewers, even as of yesterday, have played to the end and know how it goes. There are some who stopped because it was so bad or not interesting enough for them to continue. They generally aren't impressed. There's really nothing new here story-wise. The characters seem somewhat bland, and some actually devolve the more you get to know them. Everyone here seems like a bunch of adolescents. When first playing Mass Effect 1, I talked to the squad mates and felt eh with them. They were interesting, but nothing special to me. Then, as the years went by and more games came out with these characters, and from replaying the story, the characters started to mean much more to me. To me this sounds like you're not paying attention or you're just a shill and will say anything to make a positive response. Oh, don't worry, just keep playing it gets better. Mass Effect should be good the first and last time you play it. Mass Effect 2 got worse the more you played it because you noticed all the problems with it. Ditto with 3, despite the dramatic and choice resolve parts of the story in the Rannik and Tuchanka missions. Once I knew what drove them and really talked to them, they felt like real people with real stories. Yeah, you just didn't pay attention. It's like you gotta do something or read something several times over to finally Get it. Maybe you should. I don't know. Read and play more games? Uh, get an understanding of taste? Standards? Quality? Now the characters in Mass Effect Andromeda are the same way. At first, you don't know them and you're a bit cautious due to the fact that Vetra isn't Garrus or PB isn't Liara. Oh, so if you play the game several times, you'll finally get it? Uh, that's, that's the really horrific opinion of a fanatic. Oh, you just don't see what I see. Watch it again. Read it again. All the subjective opinions I have are all there. You just have to listen. No. You are a rambling fanboy who has no rational basis. You're just the shilling stupid kind who can't listen the first time through properly. But once you talk to these characters and get to know what really drives them, they suddenly become just like the characters in the Mass Effect trilogy. Same goes for the story writing. This is a brand new galaxy. They aren't going to throw a thousand things at you all at once in the beginning. They are going to ease you into the new universe and let you gradually build your understanding of the story. Well, they certainly like using in media res a lot by throwing you into crisis after crisis in the first 10 to 20 minutes. Have you scan a series of things for whatever reason, providing all sorts of random expositions, so no, I don't see that at all. Obviously, as time goes on, there's more to listen to in any story. But from what I've observed and what others are saying, it's pretty heavy-handed and 
lots of hand-holding the entire time. That goes with exposition as well as gameplay. It's a shooter with RPG training wheels. At dispenser points, you should be able to enlist their support. Sweet! Let's do that. Another gate. Have to get through. Look, up there above the gate. Another node. Try scanning it. I bet an allied observer can enable it. Let's find a way to get one. Need to get across there, but that huge boulder's in the way. Pathfinder, scanning the boulder will help determine the course of action. The rock is too dense for your weapons, but there is a deep fissure that an observer's beam might be able to exploit. I suggest you find the console that controls the dispenser. Right. Get a friendly bot to do it. Let's find the console for the dispenser. It could be encased in rocks, like some of the others. Now we're in business. Activating could draw hostile remnant. All right. Let's get across and over the ridge. Sweet implant. Sweet implant. Sweet implant. We've got to follow her inside. We've got to take out the trash first. Take them out. Let's go. This console controls the dispenser. The console here will summon an Allied Observer to repair the damaged Gateway node. Scanning the disabled node will direct the Allied Observer to it. To open the dormant gate, the Conduit node needs repair. I'm reading more dispensers for Allied Observers. I'll keep that in mind. A lot of complaints about the story is that it's slow. Uh, no. A lot of the complaints of the story aren't because it's slow. That's, that's a very specific aspect of, of storytelling. Pacing is very rarely brought up. It's a story where nothing is new. The game is very reminiscent of Dragon Age Inquisition having side missions that simply aren't any good. One of the major problems is, as the Pathfinder, you're already a year late to the party. You should be exploring, having all sorts of first contact situations and then realizing someone already beat you to the punch. Being a Pathfinder is ineffectual. It's like Bioware can't stop hand-holding all sorts of players. And not just for the story, but for the gameplay as well. You still can't crouch for some reason. It's like your knees just don't exist until you come to a chest-high wall. You can't lob a grenade at a certain strength by holding down the button and then releasing it. You can't equip your teammates with weapons and armor. Uh, you can't tell them where to go for any few seconds because they'll run off into enemy fire out of the, out of the open and do their own thing. It's, it's pretty strange. The random characters I come across feel alive and like they have a purpose for being there. Thank you for your unfounded and unsourced opinions. I completely forgot them. What I'm asking you all to do is sit back and think about the first time you guys played a Mass Effect game. Here's an idea. How about I sit back and read some critical reviews? Or are you trying to sell me on the nostalgia angle? So there's nothing wrong with waiting and saving your money and contemplating a purchase. As amazing as the trilogy is, you did not instantly fall in love with every character you met and the story. It took time just as it will for this game. Yes, of course, it's just like the trilogy because liking something takes time. What if after all this time I don't like something? Have you ever thought of that, Mr. Tucker? Have you considered that not everyone liked the characters for whatever reason? Since we're talking about subjective opinions here or are you trying to say that Jacob is a good character? And then he just ends. Just like this video.